This is episode 71 with Jacob Sokol. Welcome to the Quarter Life Comeback Podcast, the show that empowers you to become the hero of your life's journey. With your host, Brian Tier. Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another episode of the Quarter Life Comeback Podcast, episode 71 today, and I'm really excited to be sharing an episode I uh, shared with you right near the beginning of the show, and that is with Jacob Sokol. Now, before we get into that, let's check in with today's sponsor, and that is Optimize. Now, if you haven't heard of Optimize, it's a monthly membership of just $10, and really, this is the best $10 I spend every month. Uh, Brian Johnson created what's called his Philosopher's Notes. And basically what that is, is summaries of the best personal development books out there into 20-minute uh, MP3s or six-page PDFs so that you can go and learn from the best books that we have available to us today in a fraction of the time. And Brian does an amazing, amazing job of distilling all that wisdom into these bite-sized chunks. You can check that out at briantiercom slash optimize. And there's a whole lot of other goodness like masterclasses and interviews with the authors, plus ones, and a whole lot more. Again, that's $10 a month and you can check it out at briantiercom slash optimize. Right, let's get into today's episode. And Jacob Sokol is a coach who helps people master their inner game. He's also one of my biggest role models and the guy who got me into coaching in the first place. And the reason that I'm sharing this episode again, um, which was originally back in episode 27, is for two reasons. The first is, you know, a lot of people have joined the show and started listening sort of halfway through. And I want to make sure that I regularly go back and share some of the episodes that I feel are worthwhile. And the other thing is, after I interviewed Jacob last time around, he reached out to me and we've basically started working together on his business, Sensify. And uh, we launched a program in January. We're launching a really cool retreat in Costa Rica in October. And um, we are, at the time of this episode, hanging out in Barcelona together, working on uh, the business together and, and more good stuff. So I wanted to share this episode with you again so you can get to know Jacob a little better. He's obviously an important part of my life and uh, a lot of love for the dude. And, uh, you know, in this episode, you're going to learn how to distinguish between wanting more and being ungrateful, why you don't actually want to travel and what it is you do want, why the answers you're looking for aren't in your head, how to live with more authenticity, plus a really cool challenge from Jacob, and how to make the best use of your 20s. As always, you can get the links and resources we mentioned in this episode at briantier.com slash 071. But for now, let's go hang out with Jacob. Welcome back, everyone, and a huge welcome to today's guest. I'm honored to be speaking to Jacob Sokol. Jacob, welcome to the Quarter Life Comeback. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you having me here. Yeah, I'm really excited to be getting this interview and this episode out there. Um, you're someone that I've looked up to for a long time online, and um, the person who really got me into coaching and and got me wanting to do this and wanting to serve others in this way. So uh, really excited to get you on and to, to dig into all that good stuff between your two ears. Uh, but before we get into that, um, why don't you share to the listeners who aren't familiar with you, who is Jacob Sokol and a bit about your quarter life journey up to this point? It's a very existential question. Who is Jacob Sokol? <laughs> you know, I'm I'm still trying to figure that out. But the um, the kind of story behind the glory, a uh, little bit of the of my background is, you know, I, I kind of went through the motions of um, one never really feeling like I understood or was compatible with the story society told me about the way life needed to be. So the the kind of generic go to school, get a get a good job, um, get uh, the the house, you know, the mortgage, the four hundred one k, like all all of that kind of was like there is this underlying sense of like, but why, right? Like, but why, and um and so. Uh, at some point, you know, when, when I was graduating from high school, my mom basically said, Hey, you either need to go to college or you need to get the hell out of my house. And I was like, all right, well, I'm like 17, 18 years old. 
you know, I'm going to go to college because I don't know what I would do. And so I went to college and, and I, I got my little two year degree. And then I, I, um, I was doing some waitering work for a while and I went and uh, actually got a job with an IT company. And this was really cool because this was kind of like me proving to myself that I can play the game that society told me was the game of life. The the kind of show up in your business casual clothing and, and go to meetings and make proposals and blah, blah, blah. And I, I did fairly well at it at a fairly young age. And but I realized, you know, there was this deeper calling on the inside. There was this quest. There was this kind of unsettling feeling of I know that there's something more to life and I don't know how the hell to describe it. And I don't know who to talk to about it because I feel guilty that I have such a good life. I have a car, I have an apartment, I can feed myself. You know, I live in a first world country. I have such a good life. There must be something wrong with me because I don't feel good because I know I have a good life. And and I didn't want to feel um, like a spoiled brat. I didn't want to feel like, you know, oh, how how could I – be experiencing what I'm experiencing when life is so good. And so I kept it inside and, and the, the real, um, they just hit a breaking point where it was just like enough is enough. Like I know I can't continue on this path forever. I don't know what the hell to do, but I know I've got to do something. And that really led me to do some traveling. Traveling was a, a gateway for me to learn more about myself. Knowledge of self is the foundation of living with purpose, living with happiness. And uh, through that, um, then I started to figure out, okay, so how do I create a life based on who I am, what's important to me, my strengths, my passions, my values, etc. And instead of creating a life based on what society is telling me I should be doing. And that's been the journey that I've been on for the last, uh, it's been about six or seven years since I left that job. And, um, and, but, but, but the journey really started long before then. Mm. Now you mentioned like, um, you were living a good life, well, according to society, but like you had the apartment in New York and you had the job and the paycheck and the car. How do we distinguish between like wanting more for our lives and knowing that there's more to be had versus feeling like we're being ungrateful? Mm. Well, it's a great question. There's a, there's a paradox in that you can be grateful and appreciative of everything you have while still wanting more. Those aren't mutually exclusive, but we want to pay attention to what the more is. So when we say more, is it more money, more fame, more beauty, more status? These are things that have been scientifically uh, linked to shown that they're linked to higher levels of um, narcissism, depression, anxiety, worse social functioning, and chasing those what we call extrinsic incentives solely for the sake of achieving them. In other words, when we make that the primary objective, instead of allowing them to come into our life as a byproduct of going for something more deep or more meaningful, focusing on intrinsic incentives. And these are things that have, are shown to raise our happiness and levels of, of fulfillment. Things like um, focusing on cultivating quality relationships, focusing on the contribution or impact or service that you are providing, um, focusing on your growth and your uh, own personal excellence in, in whatever capacity that is, whether that's a skill at work or whether that's a, a fitness thing or whether that's a mental or a spiritual thing, but really relationships, um, growth and uh, an impact. Um, those were when, when I when I learned the science behind that and realized, wow! So these are really where we want to focus our our attention. Um, and then and then yeah, and then there is a, a level of okay, well, we do want to figure out how do we pay the bills and how do we make sure that um, we are doing what we need to do to be able to live the life that we want. And and that's been a, a fun, challenging, exciting kind of head banging against the wall at times journey that uh i think for all of us builds a lot of character mm -hmm. yeah and i love that distinction uh that you know you you can be grateful and want more um now jacob you you mentioned that you quit your job and you went traveling um 
Do you think traveling is, I mean, the, nowadays it seems like everyone wants to do the same thing, but do you think traveling is a good idea for everyone or is it sometimes easy to become like a form of procrastination for doing the hard work? Both. You know, I love the people who come to me these days who, uh, you know, say that their dream is to travel because one, I, I can relate because when I first got a taste of travel, I went gonzo for it. Um, but now the more that I've evolved and and, and learned about myself and, and really become a professional coach and, and have years of experience doing that now, what I realize is that people don't actually want to travel. They want what it is they think travel will give them. Mm. And that might be freedom, that might be um, self-expression, that might be learning, that might be excitement, that might be adventure. And what I can do with someone when I coach them is I can give them that experience today. They don't need to wait until they they you know save up enough money or convince themselves that it's okay to take the trip that they really want to take. We can get them uh, components of what they're craving right now. And we can also see the blocks that stop them from getting these things that they desire. And with good coaching, what we what we realize is that they're they've actually just created somewhat of a prison that they're currently living in and and maybe we call that prison their comfort zone or their personality can be a prison kind of the behaviors and beliefs that they've adapted about who they need to be which often come from early childhood experiences and then are influenced by culture and other variables along the way um, and so I can I can coach somebody, and I'll give you an example mm. on on what this might look like. I was talking to a woman who I'm working with yesterday. Great woman. It's actually we've worked together now multiple times, uh, which is always fun. And for her, um, you know, really, sh she's her level of contribution is really high. Um, she's a great girl. And she is, uh, you know, she's successful by, by society standards, but something is kind of missing. And, and she didn't really know. She's done the travel thing. Um, she didn't really, you know, know how to describe it. And really what was missing on a deeper level was, um, was really to connect more with her feminine side, right? And, and we all, you know, for everyone listening, I, I'm very connected to my feminine side. I'm also very connected to my masculine side. We, we want range. We want to be able to connect with both the I'm going to get it done type of energy and also the I'm going to feel um, free and, and self-expressed and open and receiving type of energy, which would be more uh, defined towards the feminine. And so for her, you know, she had cultivated her masculine very strongly and but there is this craving in her heart that she was seeking something deeper and she she gets as much as she looked for it in her mind, she couldn't find it because it didn't exist in her mind. And this is something I see a lot of people struggle with. They they try to think their way out of overthinking or they they look for something in their mind that doesn't exist in their mind. And if you're listening to this, you might be like, Jacob, what the hell are you talking about? Where <laughs> else would it be right like you know and the the answer is well in a place that we haven't been taught to look which is our heart which is our gut which is our intuition which is a deeper truth that re resides within us that society has never given us or school has never given us at least the school i went to uh you know some kind of blueprint for um or, or skill set for for hearing that and that's what creates a fulfilling life so let me let me bring it back to her for a moment so with her, you know, sure, we could have came up with an idea for her to take a big trip and travel and blah, blah, blah. But what we what we looked at is, OK, well, how can we connect her with that kind of energy inside of her that can just let some of the weight off her shoulders and, and just kind of feel like she's supported and she can feel free and safe to open up in a really vulnerable and truthful and exciting yet nerve-wracking type of way. And so the, the homework that I gave her uh, was to every day ask a man for help with something. And she immediately, immediately, as I suggested this, she was like, she's like, but then I'd look like an idiot, right? It was like immediate, like it wasn't even like a second in between when I said it. And then you see it right there. Like that's her, that was her blind spot. That's like, and I'm like, listen, I know you're a strong woman and you don't need a man. And at the same time, you might want a man. 
because life could be more fulfilling with this relationship. So it was about kind of seeing her blind spot. And and so now she gets to go on a journey right now that is a growth journey that's going to help her become the person who's going to create the sustainable version of the life that she wants, not just a two-week trip or, or a six-month trip, but but really shaping her character for all of her life so that she can live with what it is that her heart is asking for. I know I said a ton there. Yeah. Let me Let me throw it back to you. Dude, I love that. And I can relate so much. Um, I know we've chatted a bit about some decisions I recently had to make. And, um, you know, I realized by doing a lot of this um, work and asking these questions to myself is that I didn't really want to be overseas as much as I wanted to create a life that allowed me to be overseas if I wanted to be. Um, and I did like sort of a, I know this was a lot of head work and maybe not as much hard work, but I did sort of like pros and cons of me going abroad. And I realized like most of the reasons I wanted to travel, I could already do right here, right now. And, um, it also made me way more grateful of everything I have, um, sort of right at my doorstep already. So that was really cool to see that. And I'm not saying that, um, you know, if people do travel, that it's, it's the wrong decision, or I'm not saying I won't travel, but it was cool to kind of see that, like you said, it's, it's not the travel itself, but just like what you gain from that experience. So thanks mm. for, thanks for, um, sort of clarifying that. Now, Jacob, one of the things that I always think about when I think of you, and don't take this the wrong way, but it's the term imposter syndrome, because I know you've spoken about it a ton. And, um, I'm wondering if if you felt that during the sort of the situation you were in and um, if you could just sort of clarify to people listening if they maybe haven't heard of this term before, the imposter syndrome. Sure. So for me, you know, I, I don't know the exact definition of it, but I think it's essentially feeling not qualified or capable or, or, or ready to do what it is that you're, you are inspired to do and then doing it anyway and feeling like you're kind of an imposter, like a fraud a little bit. Um, and this is something that all great creatives feel. It's the feeling of, wow, am I really, I don't think I'm allowed to be doing this. And anybody who's really pushed the edge as far as arts, as far as um, culture, as far as uh, any any kind of creative expression, uh, which is all of life, basically, of cr- a creative expression, um, will feel that it's like, oh man, like I I don't know if this is if this is okay, this is edgy, and so for me, you know, I was uh, 24 when I started, or 25 years old when I started a blog uh, that was based on wisdom for extraordinary living, and. You you know there is definitely some of that sitting in my my ego in my mind like you know how can I be twenty five years old and and be talking about life advice or or wisdom who who am I to do that and we all have that we all have that question on some level the who am I to do that question and what I've learned through getting my own coaching and through support kind of working through it within myself and then helping other people work through it as well is that, you know, it's just a shitty question. Who am I to do that? And we, our life is a reflection of the questions that we ask ourselves. Questions are kind of like a compass that lead us in a particular direction. And we all have questions that are going on unconsciously in our mind that inform the direction of our life, whether we're conscious of that or not. And so the question of who am I to create this piece of art? Who am I to start that business? Who am I to get make another another $50,000 a year? Who am I to be in a relationship where I get to express myself this way? Who am I to whatever? Um, you know, it's just a shitty question. And instead, you can ask yourself a different question. If you want to be in business or you want to make more money, you can ask the question, um, how might I be able to help? Or how can I bring more value to this person or this organization? Or if you really want to stretch it and get creative here, you know, how could I bring 10 times the amount of value to this organization? Now, you might be saying, that's impossible. Or I don't know, like if I knew, I would do it by now. <laughs> and the, the, the caveat here, let me point out, is that the point of a good question isn't to get an answer. The point of a good question is to 
open yourself up to a new line of thinking, to create a new reality for you to live into. And that you might start to get little pieces of the answer here and there. And that might happen in a day, a week, a month, a year, 10 years. You know, one of the questions that I still live inside of is um, how do I get paid to do what I love while making a meaningful impact in the world? And this is a question I, I started to live into six or seven years ago. It's still relevant. Um, and and um, I tweak it and, you know, there's other questions as well. But when it comes to imposter syndrome, you know, it's something that we all uh, face at times. And I think the biggest danger is believing that it matters. Mm. The biggest danger is, oh, I'm having these thoughts. Therefore, it means I shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, I love that. It, it kind of comes back to like the head versus heart again in a way. Yeah, totally. Uh, and then the other thing that really stands out for me when I think about you is is authenticity. Um, if people head over to Sensify, they'll see like a lot of graffiti. And you were a graffiti artist running around the streets of New York. And you scream authenticity and you don't hold any part of you back, which I really love. But what I wanted to know is like, how can people listening to this go about living with more uh, authenticity themselves and being more comfortable with who they are? You use the term graffiti artist very liberally. <laughs> I, I would consider myself a graffiti writer. I'm not sure if I was an artist, although uh, I'm, I'm half joking. Um, I definitely wasn't the beautiful graffiti that you saw. <laughs> I, sure, I had my moments, Maybe but I was more interested. <laughs> totally. I was more interested in, as we would say back then, bombing or tagging. Um, so, yeah. So so how can people live with, with more authenticity? You know, there's a level of like, ah, fuck itness. Right. That like because at some point, whenever it comes to you doing something that's a little bit outside of your current way of doing things, there's just a level of like, ah, fuck itness. And whether that's like going for a goal that really matters to you or expressing like your real desires in a relationship or um it, going for, you know, I see a lot of people who are already successful and they, they're kind of trapped by the golden handcuffs. It's like the like, oh, like I've already um, created this situation that most people like me and you can relate to. Most people would really like to be in this situation, but there's something, there's something more. And I don't know what that is, but I'm like, ah, fuck it. I'm, I'm just going to go for it. So here's, here's one. Um, if you're listening now, let me speak to the people who are listening now. If you're listening now, I dare you. That's right. I dare you. Now we're getting it on. <laughs> now, here it comes. I dare you to go into Okay, I'm going to give you three different um I'm going to give you three different levels to this challenge because this is I have a program I run called the Inner Game Immersion which is uh it's about help helping people get uh, mental clarity uh, um, like emotional mastery um spiritually connected physically and energetically optimized it's it's just this full on immersion where over a 10 week period of time uh, we go absolutely you know ape shit with like making you become your best self in 10 weeks through uh, comfort zone challenges mind training techniques energy optimization practices uh, emotional processing, like it's just insane. It's the most transformative thing I've I've created. I ran it this year for the first time. I'm going to be running it again in the next few months, which I'm really excited about. So one of the one of the practices in there, kind of the the warm up uh, before we even get started, is I have people do a comfort zone challenge where they share. Um, they they finish this sentence. Uh, what I don't want you to know about me is. And we actually do it in our group, you know, and, and that's kind of edgy, like what I don't want you to know about me is. And, and I share too, right? I share like what I don't want you to know about me is. And maybe it's like, you know, I, uh, whatever, 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 I forget what the hell I said. Authenticity is, is in the moment. You can't kind of pre-rehearse it. So my challenge to you, if you're listening, is to do this exercise. What I don't want you to know about me is, and level one of this challenge would be to do it with someone who, um, who you really, you have a great relationship with, you feel safe, you, you, you maybe your homie, your best friend, whoever it is. Level two of the challenge would be to do it with a coworker. 
right? Or a client, someone who you have a professional relationship and you just finish the sentence. What I don't want you to know about me is, and then you share whatever it is, right? I think your wife is hot or like, you know, I kind of want your job or like, you know, whatever else is, is there for you. Um, and level three of the challenge, and this one is, is I, I found super edgy, is to do it with your parents. Uh, what I don't want you to know about is, and I, and I remember, you know, when I did, when I ran the program, I actually participated in it as well, right? It was like, this is uh, not just something for, for you guys. I'm doing this too. And I did it with my dad. And, uh, we, you know, I, I always feel bad for my parents when I'm like doing this crazy experimental shit and like, they don't know what's coming to them. Right. There, go, like, there goes Jacob again. <laughs> yeah. They just, it just comes out of nowhere. And, and I, I remember doing it with him. I'm like, what I don't want you to know about me is like, I don't want to talk to you about my finances because every time I do, I feel like there's this worrying that I know is love that, that you are having for me. But when I, when I, when I share with you, it just feels like you're interrogating me. And I feel, um, I feel like, like I need to defend myself and that doesn't feel helpful to my life in any way. And so that's why like I intentionally don't share, you know, the ups and downs of my business. And, 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 and there are huge ups and downs. I can have months where I bring in a ton of money and then months where I bring in no money. And that's just kind of the nature of the work that I do, which is what it means to be in an, an entrepreneur, not in a, in a month to month or week to week check. So I can remember that conversation pretty vividly, um, but that would be my challenge for someone, and that'll help build your authenticity. That'll help build the oh, fuck itness. I'm actually going to share what's real for me, and you might be listening, and you might be like, "Fuck that! That sounds like torture. Why the hell would I do that?" And you know, courage is a skill. It's a discipline. It's not something that you're either born with or not. And so, any chance that you get to really scare yourself a little bit and to step into something that makes your heart pound, not so much that it stops beating completely, but just that it speeds up the beating. Like you, you want to stretch, you don't want to snap. Um, then, then that, that's a regular practice that, and I'm speaking to myself just as much as anybody else here that we want to continue to, to remember to do every day for the rest of our life. Cause it, it'll always pay off. Cool. Jacob, I do want to be mindful of the time, but I've got a couple of questions I want to get through. Um, what do you wish you'd been told in your 20s? That my 20s are primarily experimenting and figuring out who I am. It's all about cultivating knowledge of self and the old school paradigm of go to high school, go to college, get a job, get a family, have a kid. Um, and, and to do that in your twenties, that's a really outdated model that, that, that's so not relevant to our current culture. And we don't have an upgraded map for the, the new landscape of what it means to be living in 2016. And so now I can share what I've learned, which is it, it's all about, um, knowledge of self, figuring out what are your values? Number one, what are your strengths? What are you passionate about? What's really meaningful um, to you? And then to start building some skills to look at what skills, because skills are what provide service and service is what makes money unless you're manipulating and robbing people. But if you do it in an ethical kind of scalable way, it's um, your skill. Wealth will come from providing a valuable service and a valuable service will come from having skills that are valuable uh, and in demand. So there's a magical kind of thing when it comes to building skills here. Y you want to find, you want to pick skills that are both in demand uh, and difficult. So if they're just in demand, but they're not difficult, it's kind of like coffee, right? Like everybody wants coffee, but it's easy to make coffee, at least the kind of coffee that I think I drink or my girlfriend drinks, right? And, and so you're not going to make much money um, kind of serving coffee. On the other hand, if you've learned to do something that's really difficult, but it's not in demand, then maybe you can cut down, you know, rare Amazonian trees with a specific type of like who knows what. But, you know, nobody really needs that. Um, unless you live in a certain place and have that need. Um, so what we really want to look for is the magical combination of things that are both difficult and in demand. And if you can build build skills, like for instance, um, being really good at sales is, is something uh, that might fit into that category. Or... Um, Maybe public speaking uh, could could you want to get good at it? You know, th there's a level of mastery 
that years of practice will will bring. But that's advice I'd give to myself is just to be conscious of this is this is the time to go out there and get it wrong and, and just use all of that as data to figure out who you are and what matters to you. And then figure out how you can surround yourself with people who, who uh, inspire hope and challenge your reality as far as what's possible for yourself. And along that journey, look at how you can be diligent and build skills that you are excited to build. Um, and uh, and that, that'll pay off in the long run. Uh, here comes a, a bit of a meta question. If this had to become the most important thing for quarter lifers to hear, what would I need to ask you in this interview? And how would you go about answering that? Dude, are you a coach or something? <laughs> Could you tell? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So the question is, what would you need to ask me for me to say the most important thing that people listening need to hear? Is that right? Yeah, you got it. I think we nailed it on the last one. I think the the Mm -hmm. 20s, I think that was spot on. Um you know, for me, I come back to long-term vision. Like, listen, you know this, I know this. Um, my you know my community knows this um it's really a journey and if you are if you're putting yourself in any position whether you you stay in a job that you get a a, a paycheck at um and you 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 want to continue to kind of work for somebody else and and I celebrate that as long as it's in alignment with what matters to you and you, um, or on the other hand, if you're an entrepreneur and you're out there and figuring it out, or if you're looking at how to improve your relationships, or if you're looking at how to get your health in optimal shape, whatever it is, it's really a long-term journey. And if you have the mindset of this needs to work now, or I'm fucked, then you're fucked. <laughs> if you have the mindset of I'm willing to dedicate the next 10 years of my life to this without any external rewards, without any acknowledgement from anybody about all the work that I'm doing, then you've got a really good chance of, of making real significant progress in that domain or in that category. And so I think that there's, you know, what's the most important thing I could share? I mean, there's a ton, but the one that's coming up for me now is really grounding us in the fact that, man, this is a long-term journey and you're going to have times where it feels like you are crushing life and you are just at the top of your game. And you know what? Four hours later, you might feel the exact opposite. And that's just part of the journey. If you zoom in and you're looking at it so closely, you'll lose the perspective that, in the end, if you, or, or in the long term, when you zoom out, um, I mean, man, that's that's just the that's just how you get there. You get there through the highs and lows. The highs and lows don't, aren't indicative of um, of your destiny. Sure, we want to use that data, that it, those those experiences as data and as feedback for us to figure out um, what the uh, what we might be able to learn and what some good next steps could be. But I, I really want to kind of cultivate more of what a mentor of mine and I think an influence of yours, Brian Johnson, really beat into my head, which was that, you know, we want to have patience um, and simultaneously have persistence and simultaneously have diligence, patience, persistence and diligence. And in the long run, we're bound to be successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our homie is in Guenka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jacob, if people are listening to this and they want to find out more about you and Sensify and um, all the good stuff you're doing, where's the best place for them to contact you? And uh, feel free to mention any courses or events you've got coming up too. Yeah, sure. So um, number one would be, you know, you can head on over to Sensify.com and, uh, and you know, join the mailing list. I send out kind of crazy, personalized, anecdotal um, emails with, uh, with wisdom and with stories. Um, and so that's a great way to keep in touch. Sensify.com, S E N S O P H Y.com. Um, and then the other thing you can do is you can just email me directly. My email is Jacob at Sensify.com. And if you want to share an insight that you got from today's conversation, um, you can do that. If you want to ask me a question, you can do that as well. Um, and then in the, probably the beginning of 2017, uh, I'll be running the Inner Game Immersion again, which is the the program I mentioned a bit earlier. 
and it's just a shit ton of fun uh crazy and um and the best way to uh to learn more kind of stay stay updated on that would just be to um to join the mailing list and, and i'll send something out when that comes yeah and are you still doing the the bali retreats so I've done three retreats in Bali, and I will probably do a retreat at some point next year, although I'm not sure if it'll be there. Um, but I, so again, like it, it's almost a parallel to the conversation we had earlier. Part of the reason that I, I brought people to Bali was because travel can be so transformative, and it is, and it's fun, and it's amazing to be in person, and Bali is so spiritual, and I mean, there's a hundred reasons. But as I've grown as a coach and as my capacity to help people radically upgrade their life has improved, I realized I don't need to take people to Bali to get amazing results for people. And because of that, I, I've scaled back um, quite a lot and kind of changed uh, how I offer, focusing more on um, doing kind of small intimate group programs, occasionally doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with people, and even this, this inner game immersion 10-week program that I had mentioned. Yeah, so we'll link up to all that stuff in the show notes. People can get on your list and uh, they can find out more about the different things you've got going on. Jacob, uh, before I get to the final question, I just want to acknowledge you for coming on today and for sharing your story and your wisdom. And uh, just, as I said, embodying authenticity and um, not giving a damn about what people think, but just doing your own thing. And uh, even even though you had sort of what most people would call the good life going on early in your life, uh, recognizing that that's not what you really wanted and and sort of creating your life as you wanted it um, over the last several years. So the final question I have, and we might have touched on this already, so feel free to repeat something if you want to, but what one thing can listeners do this week to start creating their own quarter life comeback? Hmm. Now you can tell I'm a coach because <laughs> I'm not saying shit. <laughs> Silence is golden. Yeah. What one thing can people do to this week um i'm gonna go selfish on this one shoot me an email yeah i'd love to get an email from you jacob at sensify.com let me know your biggest takeaway and one action that you'll take as a result of it and if you don't want to if you don't want to uh say all that shoot me an email anyway because i'd love to hear from you cool i dig it jacob thank you so so much for coming on the quarter life comeback yeah, thank you, brother. And great work and congrats on all the momentum and really staying with the journey for the long run and embodying that as we spoke about so much today. All right. Peace, brother. Peace. So there you have it, guys and girls. That wraps up episode 71 of the Quarter Life Comeback Podcast. And a big thanks to Jacob once again for joining us back in episode 27 and sharing so much good stuff. Uh, really, as I said in the intro, a lot of love for the dude. If you enjoyed this one, please share it around on social media with your friends and shoot me a tweet at Brian Tier to let me know your biggest takeaway. For me, it was the fact that what we think we want is very different from what that thing will bring us. So if you're stuck and you're, you know, trying to, let's say you want to go travel, have a look at what is it that travel will bring you, which is actually the thing you're after. And then how can you create more of that now without needing to go travel necessarily? Uh, as I say that, I'm in Barcelona, so I realize the irony there, but you get what I'm saying. As always, you can get the links and resources we mentioned in this episode at bryantier.com slash 071. And make sure you subscribe at quarterlifecomeback.com to get all these episodes and more as soon as they come out. Final uh, shout out to our sponsor, it's Optimize, and you can get all the best personal development and optimal living wisdom distilled into 20-minute MP3s or six-page PDFs if you go to bryantier.com slash optimize. And again, that's just $10 a month, best $10 I spend. I highly recommend you check it out. Thanks once again for joining me this week. And until next time, keep creating your quarter life comeback. Thanks for listening to The Quarter Life Comeback. Get started today by visiting bryantier.com.